let's ask him. We say yes. Resolve the United States should accede to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea without reservation because it's one <laughs> southern Chinese ocean. Gallagher 2014 explains that there are conflicting territorial claims in the South China Sea, such as the Spratly Islands. Should the Philippines and China end up in an armed conflict over these islands, the United States would likely be pulled into war. Joining Yuhus would end these disputes and decrease tensions, eliminating any chance of war and preventing the death of millions of innocent people. Gallagher concludes it is hypocritical for the United States to encourage another country to follow Yuhus without actually acceding to it herself. Furthermore, China is less likely to listen to the United States from a position of weakness. Joining UNCLOS will put the United States in a position of strength and prove their legitimacy and credibility to the rest of the world. Hatchigan writes in 2012, it is difficult for America to be a credible champion of rules and norms in, in the international system when it, when it has not signed on to international <coughs> law. If America ratified the convention, it would be a, in a much stronger position to assert freedom of navigational rights and contest China's anomalous position. Ben Cardin of Foreign Policy explains in 2011, our failure to ratify the treaty also undermines our ability to fully work with our allies and partners in the southern Chinese region. It is also harder for us to suggest it as a basis for resolving claims and arbitrating disputes or to rely on EEZs drawn under Yunkos' auspices. Rando 15 furthers that the South China Sea leads to a high-stakes game of brinksmanship and the possibility of a regional war which could escalate into armed conflict and full-scale war. This is pivotal. As China's Global Times revealed, a missile strike could generate up to 12 million fatalities. Contention to PSI. According to Williams 2016, the initiative aims to stop shipments of biological, chemical, and nuclear weapons, as well as goods that can be also used to produce such weapons. Chomiki 2006 states, the PSI efforts constrain trade and mass weapons of mass destruction and force traders to change their tactics. American Controls Associ uh, Arms Control Association 2018 states, there have been successful interdictions since the initiative's launch. The United States had cooperated with, P with other PSI participants on roughly two dozen occasions to prevent transfers of concern. The shipment of missiles has fallen significantly in the lifetime of PSI. Yunkos, however, helps with the legitimacy of the PSIs to other na uh, legitimacy of PSI to other nations. Boneco 11 states that Admiral Walsh testified many Pacific countries would be willing to support PSI, but are unable to convince their legislatures that PSI interdiction activities will only occur in accordance with international law. When the United States refuses to become a party to the convention, the legitimacy obtained through ratifying UNCLOS, however, would solve this problem immediately. The president legitimizes PSI under the UNCLOS treaty, basically when G Germany and Italy interdicted a shift in their waters. An important country that hasn't joined PSI is Malaysia. Vanekko 11 furthers, absent from PSI are Mal is Malaysia, who borders the world's busiest maritime strait. With nearly 525 million metric tons traveling this corridor annually, the failure to expand PSI puts international interdiction efforts at a significant disadvantage and complicates an already difficult problem. Stanford 09 states, Malaysian Prime Minister illustrates there is a need for multilateral negotiations for universal, comprehensive, and non-discriminatory agreements. States fear that United States, U U.S. driven, nature of the initiative and are wary that American leadership would actually be unilateral and non-consultative. In summary, Malaysia wants the United States to join UNCLOS so that they can uh, so that they can pass it in their legislatures. Roach 05 furthers threats to shipping in the Malacca Strait includes transportation of weapons of mass destruction and other related materials by sea. So cooperation with UNCLOS is necessary in order to gain favor with the Malaysian government. Chronic 12 states, shifting from a position of nuclear instability to a position of nuclear stability is associated with a 950% increase in the probability a militarized dispute is happening. Please <coughs> affirm. Now, we say no to the resolution. Contention 1, ramifications of drilling in the Arctic Ocean. Arctic drilling will help cause irreversible effects to the environment. Kanath in 2012, until we ratify UNCLOS, no U.S. companies will operate on the extended continental shelf. This is because companies cannot be granted the certainty that leases to these regions would not be challenged in international courts. Sheridan 11 furthers that few people seem to be considering, including Arctic people, in any debate over whether or not drilling should be allowed to proceed. Big companies are ready to start drilling, although their actions may be setting the stage for the destruction of the Arctic way of life. A major oil spill in the Arctic Ocean would be impossible to clean up and could have enormous consequences for the region's communities and ecosystems. During the winter months, the Arctic seas are covered with ice and are not navigable by oil spill response ships. If a spill started as winter ice sets in, the oil could continue to gush into the sea and under the ice for eight long months. The Coast Guard has even issued its own warning against drilling, saying that even it wouldn't stand a chance of cleaning up a spill. 
elaborating on this, the National <coughs> Snow and Ice Data Center writes that residents of the Arctic include a number of indigenous groups as well as more recent arrivals from more southern latitudes. In total, about 4 million people live in the Arctic worldwide. Skirton 11 furthers that the Arctic culture has thrived for thousands of years. The proposed activities, which lack a credible plan to deal with oil spills, can have a devastating effect on our already stressed ecosystem. Our ecosystem and culture should not be put in jeopardy for the profit of a foreign oil giant. The impact here is lives. Thousands of indigenous people in the Arctic will have their food source disrupted and as a result could be displaced or, or starved to death, contingent to undermining the sovereignty of the United States. The ability for the United States to pursue its interests would be undermined by UNCLOS for two reasons. First is unilateral interdictions. Pedroza 2010 states that UNCLOS would subject U.S. counter-terror efforts to review by international tribunals and would put our efforts under the control of foreign judges. If the U.S. ratified UNCLOS, the legality of such interdictions will be left to the decision of one of two international tribunals whose members come from countries suspicious of America powers such as China and Russia, or other unfriendly nations such as Cuba or Myanmar. The reason for these interdictions would be intelligence obtained by the ISR. The ISR is important for maintaining U.S. security, but Article 20 of UNCLOS states verbatim that in the territorial sea, submarines and other underwater vehicles are required to navigate on the surface and to show their flag. According to Garinflo, submarines provide the nation a crucial intelligence gathering capability that cannot be replicated. Since they are able to conduct extended operations in areas inaccessible to other platform systems, submarines can intercept, intercept signals of critical importance for monitoring international developments. Tortellini 13, U.S. security challenges in the region span the spectrum of conflict. <coughs> Counterterrorism challenges could arise in Asia, requiring U.S. support. As such, the U.S. needs to maintain accurate and timely situational awareness that is enabled by ISR capabilities. The United States needs to maintain their ability to gather intelligence for this reason. Valencia 2017 continues that the United States has the ability to locate and collect transmissions to or from Chinese submarines and to correlate them to specific vessels. ISR also obtained data that clarified how much the U.S. knew about China's submarine launched ballistic missiles program. And this asset would obviously be a core national security interest. Without ISR intel, the chance of a miscalculation attack increases. Jackson 2016 writes that when governments lack awareness of who is doing what and where, actors like China have the ability to exploit it. A lack of awareness increases the prospect of misunderstandings and miscalculations and accidents. However, China is not the only country on the U.S. intelligence radar. There are at least three more, as the Associated Press writes in 2018, that according to the United Nations, North Korea sent items used in ballistic missile and chemical weapons programs to Syria and sent banned ballistic missile systems to Myanmar. Investigations into the transfer of prohibited ballistic missile, conventional arms, and dual-use goods found more than previ 40 previously unreported shipments to Syria between 2012 and 2017. Another unnamed UN member state also reported evidence of Myanmar's receipt of a range of conventional weapons from North Korea, including multiple rocket launchers and surface-to-air missiles, in addition to the banned ballistic missile systems. The United States losing its ISR capabilities would enable these hostile anti-American countries to, to operate unchecked, because it is vital to keep our interdiction and intelligence capabilities. For these reasons, we say no. Since you're supposed to. Whoa, wait, 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 Okay, moving on to your second contention, you basically say that North Korea is sending uh, WMDs to Syria. Yes, that's what we're saying. So doesn't this actually supercharge our PSI contention, basically when we're saying that these countries like the Mal Malaysia can't stop these in the Malacca Strait? Well, no, because we tell you that, it, that interdictions aren't legal, unilateral interdictions aren't legal under UNCLOS. So. Why are they not legal if Germany and Italy have already stopped ships? Uh, do you know what country they were interdicting a ship from? Yes, Libya. Oh, I, uh, we, we have something that says they were interdicting a German ship. And what do you mean? They, Germany interdicted a German ship. The, what, uh, are we talking about the same thing here? You mean Italy interdicted a German ship? No. Because Germany and Italy Germany, both acted on Germany and Italy, we have something that says Germany and Italy together acted on a uh, interdiction that where they interdicted a German ship. So how does this help your argument at all? Okay, so what if they did stop a German ship? Now, if Malaysia was there, Malaysia could stop a Malaysian ship from yes. carrying WMDs. Uh, and if they like, all their countries North were in there, Korean other ship. countries could stop their how own How could ship? they stop a North Korean ship? North Korea is not going to be like, hey... Well, you, first, you off, North, stop our first ship, off, Trump us. and China are trying to go undergo diplomatic relations with North Korea right now, and they're shutting down their ballistic, ballistic missile program. And they're actually, they're, we're actually engaging in diplomatic talks. So I don't understand what your impact with uh, North Korea is. Okay, can I have a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So uh, you say that Yunkos can like end disputes in the uh, southern Chinese lake. How? Well, basically, we're talking to you about this lake. 
is that <clears throat> we're trying to tell you is that right now our allies aren't listening to us. Right now China isn't listening to us. So we need these multilateral negotiations to have the actual influence from UNCLOS so that the, legit the legitimacy provided will actually help. But what right. makes you say that China will like follow UNCLOS and will actually like listen to the United States if it's already like suspicious of American power? Well, it's they just see this as a power American grab. It's suspicious of American power because we're not actually joining UNCLOS. So they don't under so they don't know what kind of standards we operate under. Okay. You can have a okay. question now. And going with this like whole line of questioning, so why is spying on China gonna help any diplomatic relations? Well, because we right now in the status quo, we have the ability to keep tabs on them. So this decreases the risk of miscalculation and it's a pretty simple link. Uh, when we're able to see what they're what they're doing and what they're up to, then they then the risk of miscalculation decreases. Like I mean, if we were able to spy on North Korea, that would be a really big help because we could see if, if, well, in the event of any tensions rising or uh, rising in the South China Sea, then we would have the ability to see like okay. if they're plotting an attack on the United States or any other countries like the Philippines. You're talking about the territorial waters. That's yes, we're already doing that. Well. So what stops us from spying on them from 13 miles off the coast? Well, not Aren't we the most advanced military in the world? So what's off this? Well, it's your burden to prove. Can we spy from 13 miles away? Like that, we're do we're spying in the territorial sure sea in the status quo. I'm sure so the American military can spy on a nation from 13 miles away. I think it only works with 12 miles. So, but but that's your burden to prove. If 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 you can read a card that says it works 13 miles out, then that's yours. But we say in the status quo that it's happening from 12 miles and under. So that's why we can't lose that. All right, sure. We'll be taking. Is that your time? Yes. Sorry. I'll turn the map down there, Okay. Let's get it. Really? I just, I just want to be clear because it's a serious debate. The joke's here. That's why I worked. It's gotta be classy. Say classy straight. Yes, say classy straight. So let's start on the top of their case. They want to talk about the Arctic. I have 17 responses, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to say three. First, they want to talk about how this is a legality problem. This is clearly not a legality problem because you can yeet that out of the window because Trump has already opened up the wildlife refuge up in Alaska. So tr companies are allowed, are legally allowed to leave and go up there. But what, you would, but what we're actually showing you is that companies don't actually want to drill because it's too deep of water. Shell has already come out and they've said, no, we don't want to go out because we want to go into low pressure water areas. Because the Arctic is so deep and so uncharted, they're not going to go up there because it's, it's too high pressure and it's too much risk. But then next, right, if they try and want to tell you, if they want to extend all this environmental stuff, they're going to have to prove that it's going to harm the environment. Whereas we show it's not going to harm the environment because according to Luthi, that industries have worked to prevent accidents through extensive work to strengthen standards and through the creation of the Center for Offshore Safety. The industry transformed its well containment and intervention capability. And finally, the industry established the world's most sophisticated and well-coordinated spill, spill response network. So what's happening here is by affirming, we allow them to go into the Arctic. So if they do go into the Arctic, they're going to have to update their technology. They're going to realize, oh wait, we might be able to, we might have the uh, capacity to spill oil. So they're going to want to fix it. So you, we actually have solvency in our world where we solve for global warming. No one dies in global warming. Then next, they want to link it to lives, how this is going to affect a bunch of fishermen in Alaska. But you have to understand that What's happening here is that it doesn't actually hurt the Eskimos because it, several economies in the Arctic region are solely dependent on the oil and gas industry. Take Port Hope for, in Alaska, for example. The economy is specialized in utilities, mining, quarrying, oil, gas, extraction, and public admin. Nothing with, of, with, with nothing involving fishing. Next, but the small port, the, the small port of Port Hope is further quantified with the economy of Barrow, Alaska, which is specialized in not only utilities and public admin, but also get this, mining, quarrying, oil, and gas extraction. So they're re they're reliant on this. On the uh, the oil and gas companies that are up in the uh, up in Alaska right now, so it has nothing to do with fishing. You can't be looking at any other decreasing of fishing impacts. So drop that from today's debate. Their contention one does not stand. Next, let's look at their contention too. Right, they want to talk about ISR, how we can monitor China. But you have to understand, right? We once we join UNCLOS, we're able to force them to follow these rules, and so. Um, so then China is not going to be having all these bad problems and we can help decrease the tensions in the South China Sea, in the Southern Chinese Ocean. You can cross apply that with our contention one where we're telling you that according to Admiral Walsh, what he's telling you is that once we join UNCLOS, it increases legitimacy. This increase of clout that America is going to have in the international community is going to allow them to influence China to stop their aggression because that's what's important in today's debate, to prevent war. Because in the status quo, there's going to be war and it's going to be a big conflict and that's a no-no. So then what they want to tell you is that 
The submarines are gonna have to come up to the surface. They're gonna have to wave their flags, but you have to understand if we have submarines, we can just stay underwater. We don't have to go up because if they don't see us, then they can't catch us. But even if they do win that submarines are going to get caught and, and captured, we still have stuff like Google Earth and NASA who uses satellites from space so we can see down and literally see everything. So satellites in space can out quantify and outperform submarines. Submarines are not crucial because we have these big old space stations up in space. That's why you need to be valuing in today's debate because we can actually solve for PSI and interdictions and South China Sea. And then they want to talk about how, it's going, how North Korea is shipping weapons of mass destruction to Syria and Myanmar. But you have to understand, Syria's, I mean, not Syria, North Korean economy is so low that it's highly improbable that they have even shipped these weapons of mass destruction, destruction to Syria and Myanmar. Because you have to understand, North Korea has to worry about its own economy. Its own economy is currently failing right now, so you can't be valuing that attack. That's clearly not true. They're not sending weapons of mass destruction. They even concede themselves it's just rocket launchers. Rocket launchers fire, like, what, 30 feet? So it's not going to actually cause global war, and they don't actually... So, so they, they, they're not actually going to have all these serious impacts that they bring up today's debate. But instead, you want to look at our case. As I've already cross-applied, I showed you that we solve for the South China Sea, the Southern Chinese Ocean, which is crucial in today's debate because we prevent conflict in the South China Sea and PSI. We prevent weapons of mass destruction from proliferating to other countries. Um, say yes. <laughs> say yes. All right, we're going to wrap my RFD is just gonna be like, I say yes or I say no. That's all it's gonna <laughs> say. If only we could get the. <laughs> if only we could get it before the turn ended. All right. Uh, brief off time roadmap and stuff. I'm gonna be going down their case, uh, what what they said in response to our case. I've already started time. Oh, well, I didn't start time, so cool it down, Justin. Okay. All right. Um, okay. No. Okay. Uh, time starts now. On my, uh, on my first contention, my opponent has three responses to this. I would have nine, uh, nine responses to this, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to say a few things. First, my opponents are talking about the uh, legality, and the reason they didn't go in was uh, because of... Uh, you know, uh, it was too hard for them. But as we stated in our case, right, $193 billion in revenue they can gain from going in and drilling in the Arctic. So clearly there is an incentive, even if it's difficult, because it's $193 billion that they can make from it. So clearly it's, it is um, it is a legal problem if, if UNCLOS is the only thing stopping them. Sure, Trump can say that we're already going to explore the Arctic and having uh, stuff there, but we're, that's not mining in the Arctic. That's not drilling for oil, right? UNCLOS is the only thing that allows co uh, countries to legally go in and drill in the Arctic. Now, uh, on to my opponent's second response. They talked about how harming the environment but my opponent didn't have any card saying any of this, right? Meaning you should just completely drop this from the flow. Now, third contention. My opponent started talking about uh, Eskimos and how uh, the Alaskan economy depends on oil. But we're not talking about the Alaskan co economy. We're talking about the 4 million people who live in the Arctic. Those 4 million people are going to be displaced when the United States goes in and drills in their, air, uh, in their land, as well as all the people who are going to, uh, uh, if, if, if there's an oil spill happening, which, as Ruskin 11 states, that there's a 77% chance that over a 75 period, uh, 77 uh, year period, there will be a, a high possibility of at least one oil spill, right? That means that there is a, a high possibility of an oil spill, meaning that it'll kill their fish and not allow them to get food, right? Which would, uh, um, so those people, those four million people are gonna be displaced and without a food source, meaning that they could die. Now to my second contention, my opponent's trying to cross apply their first contention, uh, but, the United States has no influence over China, so you really can't weigh that. Next, they start talking about satellites, but satellites cannot pick up transmissions from uh, the North Korean uh, or Myanmar uh, water. What we do is we have submarines going really close to those um, uh, to Myanmar, right, and listen to transmissions being transmitted, right, and then from there we pick it up and be able to allow us to you know find out what they're doing and could uh, lead us to potentially uh, um, you know prepare for war or whatever. My opponents try, uh, try to say that uh, North Korean economy is so low that they would never send missiles there. But to the contrary, we read verbatim in case that they already did do that. They sent North uh, missiles to Myanmar. Now, moving on to my opponent's case. Um, uh, the, first, they start talking about uh, South China Sea and how the United States has big influence over this. But to the contrary, Fuck 16 states that while the United States has a strong interest in a peaceful resolution of competing territorial claims in the South China Sea, it itself is not a claim and thus in close to provide no additional tools for the United States to use in addressing disputes in the South China Sea. So while it, may cool, while it may be cool to think that, sure, the United States can do something, right now they cannot do anything. Whether or not they join in close, they can't do anything about it, meaning that their entire first contention is just not helpful. And if you don't buy that, Dyer 16 states that not, uh, not only that, but the biggest risk that China lashes out at a uh, negative 
executive ruling and decides to escalate his military ambitions in the South China Sea, meaning that it not only is the uh, is United States useless in it, but if we start joining in close and telling them what to do, China's going to get mad and escalate tensions, meaning that you should turn this in my opponent's case because it's a very bad thing. Next, PSI. My opponents uh, try to tell you that this is good, um, that PSI is very helpful. Um, but as Pedroso 10 states, that counterproliferation efforts at the sea are hindered by UNCLOS Article 92, which provides that ships sail under uh, the flag of one state only and shall be subject to its exclusive jurisdiction on the high seas, meaning that, uh, uh, once again, another turn on my opponent's case, that the only thing that can possibly come from joining UNCLOS is the ability to not interdict ships, right, which is really bad, meaning that all of their impacts are not uh, can only happen in the net world, meaning that that is a turn. My opponents try to say that... Um, this is going to be uh, uh, Germany interdicted a ship, but as we stated, Germany interdicted its own ship. Germany held, uh, invited the Italian military to come and help them interdict their own ship. So clearly, this is comp uh, this is the only thing, the only time this would help because if North Korea, for saying, uh, was carrying missiles of mass destruction, right? Only North Korea can stop them, meaning that nothing they say can be weighed in the round. So we have to wait on time frame because all of this stuff will happen as uh, uh, companies will start to drill, uh, and all of this stuff that we've stated will happen as soon as we join in close, and we have and magnitude because we save the most amount of lives possible and my opponent has no, nothing left and so for these reasons uh, it is a no-go for the pro. Are you ready for crossbar? Have we seen this dire card? Still oh. job. Dire? I got you. <sighs> Alright, cool. Alright. Since I went second, may I have the first question? Well, actually, you spoke fourth, but you can have the first question. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. Do you affirm the resolution? Well, I'm going to have to counter that question with another question. Do you negate? <laughs> sure, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, then I affirm. All right. So, <laughs> should I have another question then? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, what was the... Uh, how do you how do you refer to that that water body right next to China? That big lake, the ocean. Yeah, the big, what do you call it? The South China Sea. That's incorrect. It's the Southern Chinese Ocean. You you can you should refer to it correctly. Otherwise, we can't be valuing any of your arguments. But let's move on. Can I have another question then? Yes. Okay. Why should we value Pedroso in today's debate? Uh, because Pedroso is helping us say that the United uh, okay, under right. Pedro Article ninety two. Cannot uh, new close is not uh, PSI is not legal under Article ninety two because okay well does anyone close. does anyone else say that other than Pedroso? So you so you're asking for quantification of cards so one card over zero cards zero cards no is not the best zero cards I mean you're clearly not listening to my case do you want me to read my case again uh not necessarily. Okay well in our case we give you a very clear link chain what we're telling you is that once the U S joins. You close. It allows them to legitimize PSI in order to decrease tensions okay, in well, the South China Sea. Okay, legitimizing PSI would have to include changing UNCLOS, right? Because Why? Article 92 Why? states specifically, right, the flag thing, right? Like, in mm -hmm. an example, if North Korea, if a North Korean ship has a weapon of mass destruction, only North Korea can give express permission to interdict the ship. So if the United States wanted to, you know, interdict a North Korean ship, so, only North Korea can give the permission to do it. So is North Korea part of UNCLOS? Uh, no, that's just a random example. Okay, well then, we, okay, so... The, the, the actual document in UNCLOS says it has to be a country that's in UNCLOS, and then you ask them about it. So we can't be valuing that. So if North, North Korea, Korea were to join UNCLOS, then everything would be A-OK -okay for North Korea. They can continue building more weapons of mass destruction and shipping them to Myanmar. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Oh, okay. okay. All right, can I have another question? Sure. Okay, so about the Germany example. You attacked our Germany example saying it's a mm -hmm. German ship. Yes. And they're dining another German ship? Mm-hmm. And they had to call upon the help of Italy? No, they, 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 I'm not saying they had to. I'm saying Italy assisted them in interdicting the German Why? ship. Germany is not next to Italy. Well, I don't know. Maybe uh, it was near they Italy. They have to go all the way around Spain. Maybe in order to get Italy uh, encountered the ship, right? And it asked Germany's permission. Germany said, sure, let, let's go and help. Evidence? What? Is this carded evidence? Or is no, this all like I have narrative? is the thing that says that they did it together. I don't know what you're asking me for. Okay, right, basically the narrative question. that I'm trying to get to is that mm -hmm. they're not powerful enough, and that's why we need America to join UNCLOS, so then it legitimizes it, and it becomes a multinational, multilateral, international organization to fight proliferation. You can have a question. All right. But, uh, when you're talking about the South China Sea, how exactly is the U.S.? Uh, southern, southern Chinese Ocean. Uh, southern Chinese Ocean, right? Mm -hmm. How exactly is the U.S. going to benefit this if it has no legal claim under UNCLOS? Okay, see, what's happening here is this, it's, you just bring up legality again. You have to understand that once China... Can I finish answering the question? Yeah. All right. Uh, judge? 
Okay, yeah, you can go ahead. All right, so once the U.S. joins UNCLOS, right, it allows them to have more international clout, and that's according to Admiral Walsh. Mm -hmm. I already explained this, how he has more clout in the international community, and that's why it's allowing a U.S. to have more influence on China. Quick roadmap. I guess. I guess I'll frontline first, and then move on to their case. I think that just uh, makes more sense. <clears throat> um, for like just specifically, I guess I'll just res uh, respond to some turns, and then go on to like yeah. Okay. Excuse me. What they say, what their diary card is that basically they, they try to say that the United States is useless because of China, actually China escalates tensions. But this doesn't actually mean anything because what they state in their card is that China is going to relate, uh, China is going to react with back, negative backlash when when a tribunal rules saying no, that they cannot have their way. But in 2014, what happened was that the, in the South China Sea, the Philippines ruled saying no, and that it, the South China Sea was actually given to the Philippines. But there was no negative backlash, so you can actually, uh, you can actually deal, uh, you can actually take out their own turn, and you can't, you can't judges. In that debate, in, in that in the debate today. So basically, what you're going to see here is that you're going to save 12 million lives by affirming today. Because with multilateral, multilateral diplomacy, you're going to see a, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of uh, the United States legitimacy is going to go up in terms of diplomacy, and that we're finally going to have the way to actually talk to them because we're going to actually have more uh, more influence with our uh, with our allies, and we're going to have to be we're going to be at, at the same diplomatic table with our with China. And basically, in response to your Pedroso turn, we can base we what we're trying to say is that we can stop ships with the Germany the Germany. Uh, the Germany indictment might have been specific and that that was only Germany. But what we're trying to tell you is that uh, this can happen with like Malaysian ship, with Malaysia, especially in the Malacco Strait, which actually tra which actually trades our, uh, WMDs. So you're going to weigh our 950% chance of war today in this round because you're going to see a huge increase in terms of war and a lot of all the conflicts around the world if you don't affirm today. And moving on to their turn, they try to state that, tr that uh, Trump's only exploring, not mining. But basically what we're trying to tell you is that there already is an Italian oil giant <laughs> called Eni already getting plans, already getting rights from Trump to mine in the Arctic. So this is terminal defense on their first contention. Moving on to the second contention, they try to state that there isn't going to be any other tech in terms of like the territorial sea. What we're trying to tell you is that this is reversible. And obviously the United States can develop new tech that can spy from 13 miles off the shore. This makes no sense at all, Judge, whatsoever in terms of logical sense. And so basically what you're going to see here is that they can't actually access any of their impact. So in terms of scope, you're going to save those people the 950% chance of, of war across the world and, uh, and uh, decreasing tensions in the South China Sea compared to what they're trying to tell you about the ISR and North Korea. Thank you. All right, so, sorry about that. I got you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, my speed. Oh, wait, just give me a second. I just need to pick up. My mouse is like, okay, she figured. Hi. <laughs> okay, so the uh, brief off the clock roadmap, my speech is going to be just uh, repeating what my partner said in his rebuttal in response to their case, and then what he, how he responded to their uh, turns and delays on our case. Okay, time starts now. Okay, so starting off on how my partner responded to my opponent's case. Okay, so we tell you that UNCLOS will not help the U.S. in North Malaysian Sea disputes. So we, it, it, so uh, you can't buy this, and even if you don't buy that, not only is it useless, but it also aggravates China and creates more potential for conflict, which is why we'll need the ISR, but I'll get to that later. Now, responding to their contention, too, we tell you about Article 24, whatever number it is, and we also tell you that all their impacts only happen in the neg world because we respond to the PSI by telling you that PSI is mostly legal, but interdictions are not, so this interdiction problem and, like, sh shipping weapons of mass destruction, you only see our impacts in the neg world. Now, you can drop this argument about how Germany and Italy intercepted because they interdict 
interdicted a German ship. So obviously they're going to get permission for that. You still need permission. And if you wanted to interdict like a North Korean ship, obviously this would never happen. Now moving on to what my partner said in response to my opponent's rebuttal. Uh, so we're going to drop the 17. We're going to drop 14 of the 17 responses they tell you. We're just going to respond to the main three. First of all, our opponents tell you that we need to yeet this out of the window. Yeet our uh, yeet our first contention out of the window because companies don't want to drill. We tell you about the 193 billion dollar profit they will be gaining, and so this is this is an incentive. But even if you don't buy that, uh, they tell you that it's not harming the environment because companies will work to make sure oil spills are covered. But they have no evidence for this, and also other other countries are also mining, and this is not helping. This is not this is not helping the environment at all. Now, in our third warrant, they say that lives they delink the lives argument by saying that economies in the Arctic are dependent on oil and gas. We aren't even talk we aren't just talking about the Alaskan economy. We're talking about four million people that live in the Arctic, and obviously not all of them are going to be completely dependent on oil. Like they bring up Barrow, Alaska. Barrow is also dependent on fishing for some of the year. You think like some fishermen in Kanak, Greenland are going to be like, oh well. Guess can we can't guess we can't fish anymore. Let's switch over to the oil. No. So now let's uh, respond to their second intention, or how they respond to our second intention. They say that we'll we'll be able to force China to follow the rules, so we don't need ISR and increase legitimacy and clout. Well, we U.S. has no influence over China, and also lastly, it's highly they say it's highly improbable that North Korea will actually send ships because they're so worried about their own economy. We tell you that our nuclear impacts are more important in our world because of uh, because we'll be stopping four different anti-American hostile countries. For these reasons, we say no. Um, Can you have the second question? No, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, no, this, wait, no, this is actually important. I'm just gonna, this might sound really, really mean and sarcastic, but just please bear with me here. Oh no, it's gonna be mean and sarcastic. Did you listen to my summary? Yes. Okay, but you just extended through ink when I told you that your dire card tells you how there's going to be negative backlash from a no from a Okay, tribunal. I'm going to keep it real with you, Chief, yeah, right? we're just saying How is the, the South... Okay, so, so you're saying that right now in the status quo, South China Sea is... Tensions are high because they're expanding, right? Yes. Does that not count as a negative backlash? What do you mean? Like, there's you a said negative that, backlash. You said that China, um, in 2014, the tribunal said no. Now there's tensions in there. You don't think the two could be correlated? There have been, I, there's been island building since before 2014. They've mm -hmm. laid claims on the South China Sea since before that. They've but had historical tensions, tensions are high historical now. crimes there. Yeah. Because, and th none of that has to do with the fact that the tribunal said no. That's just a logical fallacy. Wouldn't You're just the relating these two also, together. Wouldn't no the U.S. Whatsoever. also join a tribunal, or at least seeing the global hegemon, the United States, coming in and showing that off their American power and saying, no, you guys can't do this. Wouldn't that also maybe plus, aggravate them a little plus, bit? Our solvency is not just going to the tribunal and saying, oh, please solve this problem for us. That's not what we're trying to what tell you. We're solvency? trying to tell you is that right now our allies aren't actually listening to us because we're not in you close. We China's also tell ally? you... No, our other allies who can actually use their influence and put sanctions on China. And they're not listening to us. So by joining UNCLOS, they're going to be like, okay, now we know what kind of standards you well, operate on. China okay. is, okay. Can I have a response question? So you, are you just trying to say that, like, if we were in UNCLOS, China would have listened to the tribunal's ruling? Yes. Why? Not the tribunal's ruling, but just us in general, if we talk to them. After. Why would they China do doesn't this? listen to the U.S. in the status quo. Why would they suddenly listen to us if we're in UNCLOS? Because we're telling no, you that with more, with more allies that we have, the, we can have more influence in terms of economic sanctions. And moving on to your first contention, I also, you wait, wait, don't wait. respond to my to my Trump non-unique when I'm telling you that there are other okay. oil companies that are already going to be drilling there, that they already have the rights to drill there. So I don't really wait, understand which, which what companies? you mean. Any, the Italian oil giant. That's Italian, Italian. right? Italian. Yeah, but they have, the they have... My dude, that's Italian. We're talking about the United States yeah, going what into... Yeah, what is Italy doing? Because Trump has... If US Italy can go around US. Spain to get to Germany, then they can go into the Arctic to go drill, right? Wait, one more time? Okay. Wait, wait no, no, no. What I'm, trying to, tell you, what I'm trying to tell you... What I'm trying <laughs> to tell you... That Trump is allowing the, all these other oil companies to actually go into the Arctic in already in Alaska. So I don't understand how you're proving uniqueness in your first. We're, we're saying that the United States specifically, right? Like say Shell or um, Lockheed you know, Martin, Big Oil. They're Lockheed, two companies yeah. that. But we're talking about the, the United States EZ, and we're yeah. allowed. We're already allowing other oil companies to go there. So well, I don't really not show the United unique. States. That's is your Italy a part of? It doesn't place. matter. We're no. already showing is that Italy oil companies are going right now. Is Italy a part of? Yes, but I don't understand. So that's the reason here. they can go in. If you're part of UNCLOS, that means that's you can go in. It. It. That's not it. What? Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. That's how it works. That's right. not. That's lovely. Not now how international trees work. And no, you may not because the timer is up. <laughs> I was already two minutes. Yeah. Only good Too bad Dustin didn't say anything.
Are you Justin? I'm saving all the final focus. Oh, I have the. Oh, yeah, we have 20 seconds. Start out. Right. Come here. Yeah. Like, we have two minutes. Are you ready? I haven't written anything. That was too interesting. Okay. addressing numbers that were brought up in today's debate, weigh them in your voters. I believe in you, Jesse. All right, so let's look at these two big numbers that were brought up in today's debate. 950%, 77%. They want to tell you that there's a 77% chance that there's going to be a 100% chance that they're going to have an oil spill. That's a 77% chance. That's a lower percent chance than a 950% chance to decrease tensions when you decrease nuclear instability. So that's how you can weigh in today's debate because, because of the because of nuclear instability, which we, we weigh into, right? Because what you can look at in our case is once we join UNCLOS, this narrative has gone untouched. Once you join UNCLOS, it allows for PSI to be legitimized. Then PSI can help stop proliferation because it's a multilateral, multinational, big world, uh, big world uh, uh, team, kind of like the Power Rangers. And they go in and they try to stop all of these bad guys that are trying to get nuclear weapons. So we prevent tensions in the South China Sea that are currently happening right now. They provide no solvency by not going, by not uh, by not joining you close. So that's what we have in today's debate. We have risk of solvency. They do not. That's why you should be voting for us, right? And then next, they want to... So their only attack really on our contention one more specifically is this dire cards talking about how it's going to escalate tensions But this their card specifically as my partner brought up was specific about the ISA, right? The ISA is not necessarily about you Solve for global warming as well So we solve for international conflicts and armed conflicts and we solve for global warming All right, we're gonna take the rest of our prep, which is about two minutes Exactly two minutes. Justin your thing ran out It's, it's done. It's done. It ran out. No Forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be go um, giving a few voters and weighing at the end. Judge ready? Yeah. Opponent ready? Yes. Alright, time starts now. First thing we want to blow off of today is the PSI. My opponents once again try to say that old Malaysia can interdict any ship it wants, but once again, we're going to have to bring in the no you. This was a turn. My, uh, my opponents did not adequately respond to this. The only way that the, uh, the PSI can possibly work is under uh, is in the Neg world. But once again, Article 92 states that they can't, they wouldn't be able to do it unless they're owned by that country, meaning that ev um, everything they've stated, all those impacts, all those benefits, can o the 950, um, uh, 950%, uh, none of that can happen unless it's in the, uh, in the neg world, right? Meaning that, once again, it is a no-go for the probe. Now, second thing, Arctic. My opponents try to say that, oh, Trump is, you know, letting other countries doing it, like Italy. But Italy is in uh, unclosed, meaning that they can drill. The United States is not in unclosed, meaning that we cannot go in and drill. That's just not how it works. My opponents never address the four million thing adequately. We're saying that those four million people are going to be suffering if we do not join UNCLOS, right? Because, uh, if we join UNCLOS, because that's going to be more drilling in the uh, in our in our zone, right? More uh, meaning more displacement and a higher probability of oil spills, meaning that those people will be displaced and without a food source. This goes mostly on uh, unresponded to throughout the round, meaning you should weigh this heavily. Next, uh, finally, uh, the West uh, West Philippine Pond or the South China Sea. This is a D-link, right? Remember, we said that the, my opponents have never stated explicitly why the United States joining will allow the, uh, the South, uh, will make sure that China randomly decides to listen to them. Well, as we stated in the dire card, right? Uh, if a tribunal says no, China gets mad. If the United States is big thing, which might as well be a tribunal or at least part of uh, the tribunal, says no, they would get mad. Now on a way, we are way on time frame because all this stuff will happen in uh, in the net world. We will uh, immediately begin working on the Arctic. We will uh, you will immediately see uh, climate change begin to form. We are way on probability because there's no uh, because all of the things that we say at the top of the links, the worst will definitely happen. But we are we are magnitude because we're affecting the very lives of these people, whether or not they live or die. And finally, scope because it's going to be all the people and all the world especially with climate change and for these reasons we say again it is a no-go for the pro nice job Great. good job team thank you kanye very cool i hope that was a little bit more entertaining than yeah, like those colonizers are evil beg, beg. Oh, okay. beg. it was a good round <laughs>